Hi, there. I'm Physio Paul, a consultant physiotherapist and YouTube tutor. For the first time I'm here in front of camera to discuss on the topics like angiography, balloon angioplasty, stent placement as a diagnostic test and medical management of atherosclerotic disease. Here we go now. Pictures are coming. Look at those very carefully to understand. Your observation will help you understand the lecture following those pictures. Angiogram, balloon angioplasty and stent placement. An angiogram is an X-ray procedure that can be both diagnostic and therapeutic. It is considered the best procedure for evaluating blockages in the arterial system. An angiogram detects blockages using X-rays taken during the injection of a contrast agent, iodine dye. The procedure provides information that helps the vascular surgeon determine the best treatment options depending on the position of the blockage. Angiograms are typically performed while the patient is sedated. The procedure may last 15 to 20 minutes or up to several hours, depending on how difficult the test is and how much treatment is given. An angiogram is commonly performed under sedation with the use of local anesthesia. The procedure usually starts with a needle put into the femoral groin artery. From one treatment site, areas all over the body can be treated. After access is established, catheters, thin tubes, and wires are threaded through the arterial system to a specific area of interest or throughout the entire body. As a contrast agent, iodine dye is injected, X-ray images are taken to let the vascular surgeon view the flow of the dye and identify blockages. The surgeon can then choose the best mode of therapy for you, whether during or following the angiogram. This decision depends on your symptoms and the severity and characteristics of the blockages. Two common therapies that can be provided during the angiogram are balloon angioplasty and stent placement. Angioplasty can be used to open arterial blockages. Guided by X-ray, your vascular surgeon navigates through the blockage with a wire and introduces a special device equipped with an inflatable balloon. After positioning the balloon device across the blocked portion of the artery, the vascular surgeon inflates the balloon to expand the artery and compress the blockage. The balloon is then deflated and removed while keeping the wire in place across the area that has been treated. Next, contrast dye is injected to assess the result. Treatment is considered a success if blood flow is improved and less than 30% of the blockage remains. If the vessel is still considerably narrowed, placing a stent may be the next step. Stents are used to prop open an artery at the site of a narrowing. Stents are generally placed after balloon angioplasty when there is residual narrowing or insufficient blood flow in a treated vessel. Stents are considered a permanent implant and cannot be used if you have a metal allergy. Stents that are used in the leg are constructed of a nickel-titanium alloy, nitinol, a memory-shaped metal. This alloy has a predetermined size and shape at body temperature and expands to this size and shape after being introduced through a catheter. These stents resist kinking and are flexible so that damage from activities that involve your legs is minimized. If surgery is felt to be a better option, your vascular surgeon will obtain any additional X-ray images needed to plan a surgical bypass of the blocked vessel S and will then conclude the angiogram. Let's focus on the various techniques of angiography. Actually I needed a short drinks break. Hectic schedule, breaks are important. Here we go again. Types of angiography. Selective coronary angiography, this is the definite diagnostic procedure for coronary arterial disease by which location and severity of the disease is observed. The mortality is low 0.1%, so also is the morbidity 1-5%, to but as it is costly it is not done frequently but only for diagnostic purpose. Indications for coronary angiography includes, 1. Angina pectoris refractory to medical treatment, to be specific, this testing procedure is the initial step to medical treatment of angina. 2. Severe coronary arterial disease is evidenced by clinical presentation and non-invasive ST techniques. 3. Unstable angina types of angina or chest pain will be discussed later in this video. 4. In aortic valve disease to find out whether angina is due to osteostenosis or coronary vascular disease. 5. To find out whether bypass grafts are occluded in symptomatic cases after revascularization therapy. 6. In patients who have survived after sudden deaths or after life-threatening arrhythmias. 7. Subendocardial infarction, non-Q infarction, in presence of abnormal exercise test. 8. Angina or myocardial infarction in a young individual below 50 years particularly when exercise test is abnormal. When exercise test and scintigraphic studies are strongly positive usually angiography reveals two or three vessel disease or disease of left main coronary artery, 75-95% to 95 cases. Narrowing more than 50% of the central lumen is though clinically significant yet narrowing more than 70% of the lumen is seen in most of the lesions associated with ischemia. 
This information has an important bearing on prognosis because the mortality rate is progressively higher in cases with one, two or three vessel disease or lesion with left main coronary artery. Among the stable cases one, two or three vessel diseases may be seen in 20, 30 and 50% respectively but disease of left main coronary artery is seen in 10% cases. Narrowing is mostly seen in first 6 cm of origin of coronary artery. Places of bifurcation are most vulnerable due to turbulence. Constrictions are described in terms of percentage narrowing. If the lesions are greater than 50%, these are hemodynamically significant with 75% narrowing of cross-section. When the lesions are greater than 75%, 95% narrowing in the cross-sectional area is expected. Left ventricular angiography, this is done simultaneously with coronary angiography. Information regarding local or general left ventricular functions can be observed together with mitral regurgitation if any. Ambulatory electrocardiographic monitoring, an ambulatory electrocardiogram EKG or ECG, records the electrical activity of your heart while you do your usual activities. Ambulatory means that you are able to walk during the test. This type of monitoring may also be called ambulatory EKG, halter monitoring, or cardiac event monitoring, 24-hour EKG, unlike ECG which gives a graph of waves monitoring heart activity for few seconds. Digital subtraction angiography, DSA is a fluoroscopic technique used extensively in interventional radiology for visualizing blood vessels. Radiopic structures such as bones are eliminated, subtracted, digitally from the image, thus allowing for an accurate depiction of the blood vessels. Complications of angiography Minor complications may include, minus one bleeding under the skin at the wound site, this should improve after a few days, but please contact your GP if you are concerned. Two, bruising, it is common to have a bruise from the catheter for a few weeks. Three, allergy to the contrast dye used, causing symptoms such as a rash, you should discuss any allergies that you have with your cardiologist before having the procedure. More serious complications are uncommon, but may include, 1. Damage to the artery in the arm or groin from the catheter, possibly affecting blood supply to the limb 2. Heart attack 3. Stroke 4. Damage to the kidneys caused by the contrast dye 5. Tissue damage caused by X-ray radiation if the procedure is prolonged serious bleeding 6. Death. You are more likely to develop complications based on, 1. Your age, the older you are, the higher your risk. 2. If the procedure was planned or is emergency treatment, emergency treatment is always riskier because there is less time to plan it and the patient is unwell to start with. 3. If you have kidney disease, the dye used during an angioplasty can occasionally cause further damage to your kidneys. 4. If you have one or more blocked coronary arteries. 5. If you have a history of serious heart disease.